Every kid has at least once dreamed of owning their own thermal vision goggles. Well, thanks to Roblox's new highlight feature, that dream is now a reality. Uh, in, in the metaverse, that, that is, it's not really yet. Highlights are a super useful tool in Studio, but they have a minor nuance because of how new they are. This is that you can only put a highlight inside of 15 objects. So right now in your game, you'll only be able to have 15 highlighted players. Ideally in the future, more will be added, and I think that's what, hap what will happen. But right now, the only way to get around this would be to group all the characters. So now we're gonna create our highlight that we're gonna use inside of our script. So click your part, create a new highlight, and then, it's basically done for us, but the only thing we want to take out is this white kind of outline thing. Um, so all we have to do is take our outline transparency and set that to one. And now it's good to go. You see how you can see it through things and uh, we're good on that end. From there, we're going to create our button that we want to use to toggle this thermal site. So all we're going to do is go into starter GUI, create a new screen GUI and then create a text button in there and we'll call it toggle thermal. You can put it wherever you want. I'm not really gonna make it look kind of good because this is more about the programming, but let's just add some text, perfect. And we're gonna create one local script and then I'm gonna put this highlight inside of the local script so that we can easily access it and clone it. Let's save our highlight as a variable. If we do local highlight, go script.highlight, we should be good to go. And let's say local button equals script.parent. So now the final thing we need for the highlight is whether or not thermal sites are enabled. So we'll automatically start with it being false. What we'll do from there is when the button is touched, so button.mouse button one clicked connect function, we wanna check if enabled is false or true. So we'll do if enabled, then turn it off else turn it on. And then at the end of this spot, we're going to switch enabled to the inverse of enabled. So basically, right, if enabled is false and we click it, it'll do whichever one it's supposed to do. And then at the end, it'll set it to the opposite of what it was. So when I enable it, it'll turn it on and set enabled to true. Now we can make our code to enable the thermal vision. So in order to do, that, to do that, we have to establish a few connections. So I'm gonna create a table variable, and this is gonna store all of the connections inside of our script. What that basically means is we have to connect to a new player's join to give them this highlight, and we need to make sure that we can disconnect that when it's disabled so that the highlight isn't added when thermal vision is off. So what we'll do is the first thing we're gonna do is look through every player in the game. So for underscore player in game.players, get players, do and then we're going to see if they have a character and if they're not you so the first one we'll do is if player equals game.players.local player so if this player is you we don't want you to be highlighted right so let's do then continue end so this will just skip over your character after that we'll do if player.character then and what we need to do from there is we're gonna create a function up here called spawn highlight into a parent. Now the reason we're creating it as a function and not just putting it in here is we're gonna be spawning highlights in multiple areas and connecting them to a bunch of a different, different events, meaning I would theoretically have to write a lot of the same code. And the biggest rule of programming is you wanna repeat yourself as little as possible. So we're gonna clone our highlight and then we're gonna put it inside of the parent of the function like so so now if there's a player dot character then we can do spawn highlight into player dot character just like that then the next thing we can do is we can do player dot character added connect spawn highlight what this basically means is with that player when their character is added so when they respawn will re-add the highlight because they won't spawn with it. Now, before we continue on our next part, we need to actually make sure that this connection is put inside of our connections table. So all we have to do is table.insert, connections, and then our connection there. Now you'll notice that I didn't actually pass any arguments in the function. If you don't know, player.characteradded has one argument, which is the character that was added. 
When you connect to a function like this, it'll automatically send that for me so I don't have to do it myself. So bang, we have our looping through the players done, but after that, we have to get new players that join the game. So just like we did before, let's insert our connection, and then we game.players.playerAddedConnect function player. So this gives you the player that we just added into the game so that we can connect our character joining. So we'll add another connection to our table and we will do player dot character added connect and we'll do just what we did before, which was spawn highlight. And that's our thermal system for the most part. You'll now notice that every character will have their highlight when they join the game. Now we need to disable it. So disabling this should be pretty easy. All we have to do is we have to do for underscore connection in connections do connection disconnect. So it'll basically remove anything inside of this table so it'll no longer know when a character or player is added so we don't end up giving them the highlight. From there, we'll reset our connections table and then we'll loop through our players like we did before. And if they have a character, then we'll see if we can find the highlight. So let's do this player dot character find first child highlight. And we'll do if highlight, then highlight destroy. So now this system should fully work. Let's do a two player test and see what happens. So here I am and here's another character. If I click toggle thermal sites, you'll notice that the player is now highlighted and we can toggle it back and forth like that. But there's one more thing that we have to do. We wanna add lighting to make everything else look kind of blue so that the player contrasts and it looks more realistic. Let's get to it. All you have to do is go into lighting, create a color correction effect, and we're gonna name it something like thermal CC, which stands for thermal color correction. And then we're gonna make our design. So I'm gonna do negative 0.5 brightness, so it kind of darkens things that are not the highlight. I'm going to maximize the contrast and then I'm going to increase the saturation as well to about somewhere like here so that everything appears a little bit more colorful but also dark so that the player will stand out. Now make sure you have this disabled by default because the thermal vision is disabled by default. From there we're going to index our lighting by doing local thermal cc equals game.lighting find first child thermal CC. And then all we're going to do is make one final line in which we do thermal CC dot enabled equals enabled because once we've toggled it to true, it'll become true and the lighting will be visible. So that's all you need to make working thermal vision. Let's give it one more check. And just like that, we've created our thermal vision so that everything has this cool view. You can make an FPS with it so you can see players. And there you go. I hope this tutorial taught you how highlights work and hopefully Roblox will allow you to put them in more objects in the future. Thank you guys so much for watching this tutorial. Let me know any questions, comments, or critiques down below. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.